And straight off the bat, I mean, there is a ton of stuff installed on this unit. Looks like I could probably scroll for days here. Now you could go through and change the themes if you want to, uh, but I'm looking for the higher end stuff. I know that this will do Neo Geo, N64, SNES, and things like that. Really, what I wanted to see was if this will run Wii, Wii U, PS2, PS3. And we do have a Wii U section, but there's only one game, an easier one to run. And just looking at the specs of this unit and kind of knowing what we need for emulation, this will probably run some of the easier to run PS3 and Wii U games, but I wouldn't buy this specifically for those systems. We will need a little more power to run a lot more games in those systems. But when it comes to GameCube, Wii, and PS2, this should handle most of the stuff. So while scrolling through here, I found this Killer Instinct section, and we have the arcade version of Killer Instinct 1 and 2. I'm going to go with number 2 here and just see how well it runs it. Since this is an x86 base PC, I don't think we're going to have any issues with this one. So yeah, I can tell you right now that this is running at full speed. I'm not a big fan of this stretched out aspect ratio, but it is running quite well. So what I want to do now is kind of just plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at some of the stuff on here, and we'll do some more testing. Alright, so like I mentioned, I could scroll through here for days because this thing is just jam-packed with a ton of stuff. One thing I don't like about the way they have this wheel set up is they have the collections and the systems on the same wheel. It would have been nice to just have a collection section, but this could be changed later on. Uh, right now, there's one thing I want to do before we get into testing. I want to go to System Settings developer and turn FPS on so we can see how well everything's running and we're gonna start off light here let's go with PSP if I can get back to it all right so here we are with PSP and one thing I have noticed is Chains of Olympus is missing and Midnight Club 3 dub edition because those are some harder ones to run and I suspect that even at 1x this might have a little trouble running those games at full speed given the specs on this system but there is a ton of stuff in here that will be fully playable. Let me get through here and find something. But yeah, Chains of Olympus is missing. That's one that I always like to test. Very odd. We'll just go with Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. So right now we're using the standalone version of PPSSPP and Monster Hunter is running great. I've actually been able to upscale this to 3x. I didn't try to go any higher, but out of the box it was set at 1x and I definitely wanted to get it looking a little better. But yeah, when it comes to PSP on a system like this, there's going to be a lot of games that'll be fully playable. But they did leave out a few of the harder ones to run, which makes me wonder if they did that on purpose. Moving over to Sega Saturn, this is using RetroArch and that Yoba Sanshiro core. We're not at 4x3, and I did try to go into the Botocera settings to set it to 4x3, but it's still stretched out like this, and personally, I really don't like the way this looks. But Sega Saturn does run really well on this system. The FPS is up in the top right-hand corner. Next on the list we have Dreamcast, and going into this I had a good feeling that Dreamcast would run at full speed on this setup. The hardware is definitely sufficient enough to run these games, whether you use Flycast or Redream. Okay, so let's take it up a little bit here. We're going to go with GameCube and Wii. Now this uses the standalone version of Dolphin inside of Botocera, and I got a good feeling that we'll have great performance with the easier to run games, but in this video I want to test out at least one of the harder to run games that I usually always test, and that's Automodelista. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but I do have the FPS up in the top right hand corner. And at 1x resolution, this is running the game at full speed. I haven't had any dips or anything like that. I'm actually pretty impressed here. And like I mentioned, this is one of the harder ones to run, and it runs just fine.
So with all those out of the way, let's test out some PS2. Now, one thing that I've noticed with PS2, or at least the PS2 section, is a lot of these are the European version, so they're only going to be running at 50 hertz. There are some universal games here that allow you to switch it from 50 to 60 hertz, but something like Tekken 5, which I'm going to test first, only runs at 50 because it's the European version. But as soon as we're finished with this one, we'll move over to something that I can switch it over to 60 hertz or 60 FPS. Okay, so it's really not that bad. We're at the native resolution, and I'm sure if we upscaled this from within the settings, uh, it would dip on down. But down in the bottom right hand corner is the only way that I can display the FPS in Linux with PCSX2. And as you can see, right in the middle, we're at 50. It does dip down to around 49, but overall it's something I personally don't notice. Moving over to the PS2 version of Soul Calibur 3. This is one of those games where you can swap it from 50 hertz to 60, and we're sitting at 60. When there's lots of effects on screen, I do see it dip down quite a bit every once in a while. It's definitely not perfect, and I can tell you right now that we're basically right on the edge of what this thing can do with PS2, so if we did try to upscale this, it would go on down. And the final emulator I wanted to test here was SimU for Wii U. We have Mario Kart 8 running, and we're not quite at 60. I've gone into the settings, I've tried to adjust everything I can, and it's just not putting out enough power. <laughs> 